Hi again there guys and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars, my podcast style series where we get into the meat of topics on a weekly basis. Could be countdowns, predictions, discussions, even news sometimes. And every so often I like to ask you guys and gals what you'd like to talk about in this series. And there are some really good suggestions. Some of them are very, very clickbait-esque hot button topics. Stuff like which is better, cars versus bikes, why do people have that mentality, or arcade versus sim, or PlayStation versus Xbox, and of course the classic Gran Turismo versus Forza. And the problem that occurs in all of these different discussions is that as great as they are for getting views, and they are, the problem is most people who make those videos, and even more so the people who watch those videos, go into the discussion at a disadvantage, even though they themselves don't realise it. And some people probably won't like this episode of Beards and Cars because they'd call it artsy-fartsy. We're talking more about, like, why people do things rather than just the straight-up discussion. But that's this episode. So if you don't like that, don't watch it. But what we're getting into is more important than whether or not Gran Turismo or Forza is better. It's about the mentality of why you need one to be better. Because when you actually analyse it, that's a stupid mentality. So, the disadvantage that people have when they go into a discussion like that is they go in with a preset opinion. They don't want to hear the other side of the argument. Some people, for instance, when I even mention Gran Turismo versus Forza, will immediately get the hairs stand up on their neck because they hate Forza, or they really dislike it. They've heard things, maybe they played it for ten minutes, maybe they just don't like it. But then that, for them, translates into Forza is trash. Now, maybe for you it is. That doesn't mean that it is. That means it is for you. But people present opinions as facts now. So the point of this discussion, not just from what I'm saying, but in the comments as well, is getting to the roots of stuff like that. Because an illustration that I would say to try and help people with that kind of mindset, and it goes way beyond just games, as I said, stuff like Marvel vs. DC, which is one of the most ridiculously overblown arguments back and forth. Personally, I love them both. I think that Marvel is making superior movies. I think that DC has superior games. And as far as comics go, they both have excellent ones. But this whole mentality of one having to be better than the other, but not just that. Once you've decided which one you prefer, you then have to do all in your power to bash the other one, and to stop other people from liking it, or to hate other people who do. So why do people do that? Well, as I said, I wanted to illustrate it in a simple way. Imagine that you're on an island. You've never seen food before. Imagine that that was possible. And one day, you find a coconut. And you love it. It's this large, filling, tasty meal in one thing. You just pick it, and you're done. It's filling job done. You've got a little bit of drink from it, some food from it, and you fall in love with it because it's the only food you've got, so it instantly becomes your favourite. Then, somebody else comes up to you and offers you a handful of cashew nuts, and you think, why the hell would I want to eat cashew nuts? I've already got a coconut. It's bigger, it's more filling, and I already know that I like it. Why would I want to eat this smaller, pasty-looking food in comparison? And that's where it ends, unfortunately, for most people. Because in the actual scenario of food, most of us would try the cashews. But for some reason, and this is where it gets interesting, for some reason, when it becomes a social setting, and especially when it becomes behind the safety of a keyboard, keyboard warriors, as it's often said, for some reason, when people feel like they don't have to show their face, they become more confident about saying that they hate certain things and love others. If it were the food, then chances are you'd probably try it, especially if you'd only had one food for a long time. And yet, if you turn that coconut into Gran Turismo and turn the cashew nuts into Forza, people don't want it. That makes no sense. Now, I don't understand it especially because people naturally, and me of all people should not understand this, but for whatever reasons I do, most people are social creatures. Humans in general are social creatures. They rely on each other, they help each other, their social combined strength improves the breed, as it will. 
or as it were. And that's why people like to be in groups. That's why they have a, a group of friends that share similar ideals. That's why they have social cliques that, again, have similar goals, similar humor, similar ideals, similar dislikes as well. The KKK, for instance, they probably wouldn't be friends under normal circumstances, but because of that messed up ideal, they happen to have the same goal. Now, when it comes to gaming, again, it's strangely the opposite, because you would think that somebody who is already ostracized enough for being a gamer, because there are lots of people who still think that gamers are nerds, although it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be, but for those people, you would think they would want the biggest possible social group that you could get to be that support network for enjoying the same things that you do. But for some weird reason, it doesn't apply like that in the gaming world. People feel like they have to stick to this one game or this one type of game. I am a sim racer, so arcades are trash. I prefer arcades, so sims are trash. So why do that? Going back to the guy on the island, he doesn't have to disown the coconut to eat the cashew. He can, drum roll please, eat both. I mean, I know that's breaking news, but it's a very real option that people just seem not to think of. Now, the reason why I find it interesting that I, of all people, do seem to be able to see this weird social situation when a lot of people just don't think about it in the first place is that I am not a social person. I talk far more on YouTube than I ever would if you were talking to me in real life. I'm not a social person. I am perfectly happy with my own company, my own thoughts. I don't consider myself to have any or to have ever had any real friends. And I don't say that in a way that's woe is me, I wish I did. I'm actually glad that I never have because most people don't even understand what friend means. What most people mean by friend is just an associate, someone who you happen to pursue the same goals with. But a true friend is someone who supports you when you need it, who will come to your aid even if it's inconvenient, who will tell you that you're out of line if you do something that's against your own moral compass. How many people have friends who actually do that? Not many. I never have. And I don't actually view that as a bad thing. I'm happy to be a loner. So why would me of all people be able to see the irony of these people who simultaneously love the idea of having this social group where they all love a particular game and yet make the conscious or unconscious decision to alienate a complete group of other people with such similar interests, literally millions of people who like DC instead of Marvel, who like Forza instead of Gran Turismo, etc. And yet they don't even consider the opportunity of potentially literally doubling, in some cases, the group that they can identify with. How many people play Gran Turismo? About five or six million, probably, something like that. How many people play Forza? Maybe a similar amount? Four to six million, probably, something like that. If you embrace both, you've now got a fan group in excess of eight million people that you can play and enjoy the game with. And yet people just aren't open to that. Now, that's within their right, of course, to do so. And once you tell somebody that they have a right to do something, that again tells them, oh, I can just shut down now. I don't have to listen to whatever else you have to say because I'm going to just exercise my right to disagree. And if that's the kind of person that they want to be, then that's the kind of person they probably will stay. But I just think it's a shame for those people. A lot of people find trolls, for instance, to be really annoying. And although, of course, a troll could potentially annoy me, I would be more annoyed if somebody actually acted like that in real life rather than behind a keyboard, because the reason why you don't see much hate on this channel is because when I see hate comments or people who try to advertise themselves on my channel, stuff like that, the reason why most of you guys don't see those comments is because I remove them and block them as soon as they come up. Because that's not constructive criticism, that's not contributing towards this channel, it's pointless and it lowers the tone, it's a toxic attitude. So they're gone, it's as simple as that. But I feel sorry for these people because they've literally got nothing better to do. It's almost like they're so jealous that other people can accomplish things, or that somebody else can belong to a group, like the group that we have here on this channel. I don't expect you all to get along because by definition we all have different opinions. Again, that's the point. If everyone liked the same thing, then life would be boring. That's the whole point of having different opinions. But where the line comes is between having a difference of opinion 
that you can both live with comfortably and still respect each other and enjoy each other's company, but then people aren't happy to do that. They feel that having a difference in opinion is somehow a personal challenge toward them and that they have to change the other person's mind. And of course there are some circumstances where it can be more of a grey area. For instance, you might be arguing with someone and realise that you're not actually talking about the same thing, and that it's really more of a misunderstanding. Or sometimes people may present something that, you, that they believe is a fact, but it's not. It's an opinion. It's something that they've remembered wrong. Me, for instance, I've never claimed that my knowledge of cars is perfect. Certainly not. There's plenty that I don't know and plenty that I get wrong. And in my videos, and this is partially due to the fact that I, as I've said before, don't use scripts. In any of my videos, I talk freestyle based around the specs of the cars and just make it up as I go along. Not in terms of facts, of course, but in terms of what I'm going to say. So the problem with that is that sometimes you can trip up or you could remember something wrong, which is why I often say if I remember correctly or if I recall correctly. Now, of course, you could say, well, why not just research it before the video? That's true. Sometimes I've just got such a flow going that I don't want to stop. Other times I think about it before the video and I do double check it. But at the end of the day, even if I don't check it, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because if I preface what I've said by saying if I recall correctly, then that allows those who care enough to actually research it for themselves and to check out is what he said correct. And I know that a lot of you guys do that and sometimes you will correct me. And although I've never been good at accepting correction because I view it as a personal weakness, it's not that I get angry with the person correcting me, it's that I hate myself for having something wrong. It's a, I guess, a perfectionist attitude, which in itself is not a good thing. Because I have that, I will often be negative in response or aggressive to being corrected. But when I actually have the time to think about it and to accept that yes, I was wrong, then usually I will. If I was actually wrong and if I double check it myself, I will accept that that was wrong and if possible, change it. So again, there's a difference between arguing or talking about something that is a fact, something that I factually got wrong, but then you'll have people who will put a comment on my videos, for instance, if I say as an example that I'm not a fan of the Nissan GTR which I've kind of said before. It's not that I dislike it, it's, as I've said, I respect it, but I don't love it. Now that's an opinion. It's not a fact, which is why I don't present it as one. I said, I don't love the car. But then you'll have the classic comments from people saying stuff like, you're stupid because you don't like it, or you should like it. That's unfortunate because Although you could view that as annoying or it could make you angry that people have the kind of arrogance to think that you should have their opinion, because if it ever comes across that I am telling you to have my opinion, that's not my intent. The purpose of my reviews is not to make you like the cars that I do, at all. I talk about cars that I like, cars that I dislike, and I try to give people an informed decision of which cars are worth getting in a game. That's it. And even as far as my second channel goes, with my movie reviews, again, I don't tell people that they should like the movie, I just recommend ones that I think are worth checking out. Basically the same as this channel, but for movies instead of cars. But people have this response to it which is just completely wrong <laughs> and I guess it's something to do with the way they're raised because it's not just one or two people. Society en masse, especially younger people, with the advent of social media and how important to life it has become now, because of course people had differences of opinion throughout history but it's never been as broadcasted as it is now. Back in the day if you disagreed with something or some politician the only people who would know about it would be you and the people that you tell directly, like your group of friends or people who overhear you like at a bar or something like that or a social setting. Nowadays, if you disagree with something that a politician says, you can put out a tweet and within 24 hours you can be viral. So it's a completely different ball game that we're playing with. And the biggest downside of that is that it empowers not just the people who have great ideas, but the people who don't have a clue what they're doing. <laughs> and those are the people who tend to be the loudest and the most vehement in terms of presenting said opinions as facts instead. 
Now, I'm not necessarily talking in this video about a way to solve that issue, because it's not an issue that's going to be solved anytime soon, because people do love to disagree. Even on this channel, you could say, well, why do you do top tens then? That's about categorizing the best and the worst of something. Well, yes and no, because again, my top tens are generally based as much as possible on the facts of the numbers, which is not an arguable thing. You cannot argue with numbers. It's one of the constants of the universe. But when I present a video that's like, the best of, well then of course that's my opinion. And I usually, if not always, say that in the video. And it's those kind of areas where people get the wrong impression, as if I'm telling them what they should like. And I think that's the problem that a lot of these this versus this mentalities have. Marvel DC, Gran Turismo Forza. Whereas if all of these people could actually just stop for a second, and this is actually an advantage of social media because when you're talking to someone in person, it's hard to think of the next thing to say if you're in a heated argument. So you tend to say things that you don't really mean, you don't think of things that you would have had you been more calm. So being behind a laptop or behind a keyboard can sometimes be a good idea because you do have more time. You don't have the social pressure of looking them in the eye or being face to face, which has its own downsides, but it allows you the time to actually think before you speak and choose your wording more carefully, which is all the more annoying when people don't, because they don't value that advantage. But if you do use it to your advantage, you can do what I said, you can stop and think. Wait a second, why do I dislike this opposing thing? Well, if you dislike it because it genuinely or genuinely has something wrong with it, like for instance, I like Marvel films more than DC, because DC films feel a bit messy, a bit all over the place. That is a fair critique, but it's still an opinion. It could be based on certain facts, but overall it's still an opinion. Whereas if you say, I dislike DC films because they make less money than Marvel, well that's kind of a weird argument, but technically speaking, that would be a fact, because it's true or at least compared to certain Marvel films. So that's the differences with opinion and fact, and of course that's a very simplified version and it gets much more grey than that in most conversations and most circumstances. But it is a shame that more people just can't stop and think, wait a second, this guy isn't trying to get me to disown what I love, he's trying to get me to be open-minded to loving more than one thing. And I don't understand why people dislike that idea so much. I would have thought now more so than ever, people would like to be loving both sides of the argument or having as many different things that they enjoy as possible. But for some strange reason, when it comes to that attitude, people don't. And part of it, of course, is due to wanting to have the best of this and best of that and top fives, top tens. But when it comes to versus matches, that doesn't have to be the case, because by definition, a versus match is more of a discussion, it's more of an open forum. A top 10 or a top 5 countdown is more absolute in its nature. But I guess overall that's it for my thoughts. Of course, as I said, it's a discussion which isn't really talking about like the facts of the game or anything like that, it's just something interesting and different to think about, because it's a constant problem. And I don't expect this channel to completely turn people around to liking both Gran Turismo and Forza. And one of the reasons why I cover so many different driving games, and I plan to do even more in the future, is because I want to combat this mentality. I want to help people to not necessarily have to watch my Forza content, and if you look at the views, most of my subscribers don't. Of course not, because I'm primarily known as a Gran Turismo channel. But what I like to do is I focus in on Gran Turismo because that's what my craft is, that's what I'm known for, that's what made this channel into what it is for the most part. But I like to pepper in these other things like the Test Drive Unlimiteds, the Forces, the Project Cars, even the ride games for motorbike content as well. Because it's not that I force anyone to watch those, but the option is there. And most channels don't give you the option. And that just helps to make it an even more negative situation because you stick to the channel that just does what you like. Whereas if the channel offers more than one thing, well then you could say one day, well, hmm, maybe I should just check out a Forza video. And I'm sure some of you guys have. Maybe some of you who weren't interested at all have watched one or two. I'm not expecting you to immediately love it, but having an open mind is such a beneficial thing. And it's not beneficial for me. It's beneficial for you, and that's what these people don't get. It's not that we're trying to make you appreciate our argument because we want to beat you. 
we want you to love both like we do, because trust me, having been someone who played Gran Turismo exclusively, then Forza exclusively, and now for the first time both in the past couple of years, I can tell you, this is the best part. Playing them individually was good, playing both is far superior, because you don't have to choose, you get the best of both worlds. And the funny thing is, you might think that you know the negatives about Forza. If you're a Forza fan, you might think that you know the negatives about Gran Turismo, but trust me, you will never fully appreciate the upsides and downsides of both until you love them both. Because once you love them, you can actually be honest and say, you know what, I love Forza, but this part of it is not very good. You know what, I love Gran Turismo, but this part of it is not very good. And you can only fully do that, ironically, when you embrace them both. And that's where I am, that's where a number of you guys are, and I'm sure that you guys can agree that that is the best place to be. Because you fully get the complete experience, you can take all of the best points from both and enjoy them, and then you'll find that the negatives about the games kind of don't bother you as much anymore, because you have multiple options. But overall, I guess that's what I wanted to talk about in this discussion. Of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Doubtless it will be back and forth as far as people agreeing or not. And it's not that this is the absolute opinion on the subject. Of course, what I've said is just that, an opinion. Based on what I've seen, what I've thought of, what I've seen in my personal groups, social groups, media trends. And different people see different things. Different people bring different experiences from their own past. So, of course, opinions are going to differ. But that's it for this discussion, overall, this instalment. And, of course, I would love to hear topics that you'd like to discuss in the future and your opinion on this topic as well. Or maybe one of the subcategories within, like Marvel PlayStation, <laughs> Marvel DC, I should say, Xbox PlayStation, Gran Turismo Forza, Arcade Sim, Cars, Bikes, etc, etc. But that's it for this pick. I will see you guys next week. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.